Good evening, I'm Kimilia and this is Kini News. The manhunt for Malaysia's failed John Wick has come to an end. Police have secured a seven-day remand for Hafizul Hawari. The suspected airport shooter who allegedly aimed at his wife and missed, hitting her bodyguard instead. Police have obtained a seven-day remand order against Hafizul Hawari, the suspect accused of firing shots at his wife at the Kuala Lumpur International Airport on April 14th. Magistrate Rais Imran Hamid granted the order during Hafizul's appearance at the Kota Baru Magistrate's Court this morning. Arriving at the court complex around 8.30am, Hafizul was heavily guarded by the police, donned in purple lock-up attire. He was represented by the National Legal Aid Foundation lawyer, Nurul Atika Abdul Karim. The 38-year-old was apprehended in Kota Baru, Kelantan around 3pm yesterday, ending a 36-hour manhunt. Hafizul allegedly fired two shots at his wife, who operates an Umrah travel company, as she awaited pilgrims returning from Saudi Arabia. Fortunately, the shots missed her, but one struck her bodyguard, inflicting severe injuries. Following the gunfire, Hafizul fled the airport, prompting an extensive search by law enforcement. The suspected KLIA shooter had a grand escape plan up his sleeve. However, thanks to the swift action of PDRM, Hafizul is now in a lockup and not outside the country. The police haven't ruled out the possibility that the suspect in the KLIA shooting planned to flee to Mecca, Saudi Arabia via the Kelantan Thailand border. Bukit Aman's Criminal Investigation Department Director Mohamed Shuhaili Mohamed Zain mentioned today that Hafizul Hawari might have intended to hide in a neighbouring country as authorities began hunting him down. Shuhaili noted that while they were uncertain about the specifics of his escape plan, they discovered foreign currency and a passport in his possession. It's true, he often travels abroad, so I can't dismiss the possibility. He stated during a press conference at the Clanton Police Contingent headquarters in Kota Baru. The man was apprehended while attempting to retrieve a health test report from a private hospital in Kota Baru, Shuhaili disclosed, adding that Hafizu was also staying at a hotel near the hospital. The Federal Territory's Mufti advises boycotters to follow the law and mind their manners. He stresses the importance of Islamic teachings and informed decisions when boycotting brands associated with Israel. Federal Territories Mufti Lukman Abdullah has advised individuals participating in boycotts against brands associated with Israel to ensure their actions comply with the law. In a statement to Free Malaysia Today, Lukman stressed the importance of adhering to Islamic teachings and maintaining good manners and morality. While acknowledging consumers' right to boycott certain brands or products, Lukman cautioned against forcing others to join in the boycott. The Mufti's remarks come amid social media backlash against Malays seen consuming products allegedly linked to Israel with derogatory labels such as dogs and pigs being used. In a controversial incident, three individuals were recently arrested for allegedly threatening customers at a McDonald's outlet in Sungai Isap, Kuantan, Pahang as part of a boycott campaign. Kuantan District Police Chief Wan Mohamad Zahari Wan Busu revealed that the suspects engaged in verbal insults and slurs directed at customers intending to dine at the establishment. Lukman also stressed the importance of making informed decisions based on facts when choosing whether to boycott brands like McDonald's. In essence, he reiterated the necessity of upholding decency and ethical conduct in all actions and decisions. Rafida Aziz, the queen of straight talk, is sounding the alarm bells, urging authorities to squash divisive issues cooked up for political gains. Former Minister Rafida Aziz is calling on the government and the authorities to address divisive issues that are being stirred up for personal political agenda. In a statement to Malaysia Kini, she warned that failure to tackle these issues could lead to Malaysia losing out in the long run. Rafida expressed concern that if action is not taken, it would give the impression that local leaders are being held hostage to narrow political interests. She said Malaysia cannot afford to be perceived as a directionless nation influenced by self-serving individuals who prioritise their own agendas over national unity. Highlighting the desire of the majority of Malaysians to live in peace and harmony, Rafida said divisive actions undermine this goal, creating unnecessary conflict and discord in society. She criticised those driven by egotism 
any thirst for power, urging government and relevant authorities to take decisive action to address such behaviour. Rafida stressed that these divisive actions hinder national unity efforts and divert attention from important nation-building tasks. Ultimately, she urged the government to prioritise the well-being of the nation over personal political objectives, warning that allowing divisive issues to persist would only harm the country and its people in the long term. She criticised those driven by egotism and a thirst for power, urging the government and relevant authorities to take decisive action to address such behaviour. Muhyiddin Yassin, the man on a legal roller coaster, is now aiming for five Court of Appeal judges to hear his plea to restore his discharge and acquittal in a power abuse case linked to the Jana Wibawa program. Former Premier Muhyiddin Yassin is seeking five Court of Appeal judges to hear his review application to restore his discharge and acquittal DAA in an abuse of power case linked to the Jana Wibawa program. Mohidin's defence team indicated this at the appellate court during case management of the review bid this morning. The court then told Mohidin's legal team to write to the Court of Appeal President, Abang Iskandar Abang Hashim, to consider the request. It's set July 9th to hear his review, which targeted the court's earlier decision to set aside his DAA. On February 28th, the appellate court squashed Mohidin's DAA and reinstated the four abuse of power charges against him. The three-person bench shared by Hadaria Sheikh Ali unanimously reversed the Kuala Lumpur High Court decision on August 15 last year that allowed the former Prime Minister's bid to challenge the charges for being vague and defective. Muhyiddin still faces three related money laundering counts pending at the Kuala Lumpur Sessions Court. The Kuala Lumpur High Court slammed the brakes on 1MDB's hopes for a fresh face in its 8.05 billion ringgit lawsuit saga. The Kuala Lumpur High Court rejected 1MDB's request for a new judge to oversee its 8.05 billion ringgit lawsuit against its former CEO and a former Treasury Secretary General. High Court Judicial Commissioner Raja Ahmad Mozanuddin Shah Raja Mozan dismissed 1MDB's bid to have Judge Atan Mustafa Yusuf Ahmad preside over the case involving alleged breach of trust and conspiracy. 1MDB sought the transfer because Atan also oversees its 8 billion US dollar lawsuit against former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak. However, the defendants, former 1MDB CEO Arul Kanda Kandasamy and former Treasury Secretary General Muhammad Irwan Serigar Abdullah, opposed the move, arguing that their case differs from 1MDB's action against Najib. Irwan's lawyer, Lavinia Kumarindran, confirmed the outcome of today's proceedings in Ahmad's chambers, stating that 1MDB was ordered to pay 8,000 ringgit in costs to Arul Kanda and Irwan. The trial for 1MDB's lawsuit against the two is scheduled for September this year. Join our Muhiba Story Photo and Essay Campaign. Share your cross-cultural friendships to celebrate Malaysia's diversity. Submit a photo with friends or family from different ethnic or religious backgrounds, along with a 100-word story, to ourstory@malaysiakini.com by April 30th. Selected stories will be featured on Malaysia Kini, and contributors will receive a free one-month subscription. Let's build a better Malaysia together. That is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.